Yeah, I think what I did for South Africa is amazing, but as an investment case, I won't be surprised if Capitec, you know, if this stock falls to maybe 20, 30% over the next year or two. Not financial advice, of course, that's just my opinion. But I love the platform. I also love sushi, but I'm not going to pay 500 Rand for, you know, a portion of salmon roses. So I, I watched this one YouTube channel where the guy always goes, when he, when he predicts something and it just short, sort of happens, just sort of, then he goes like, exactly as predicted, exactly as predicted. So maybe I would say this time that you go, exactly to the T as predicted. This is what will happen. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Fin Me Up Weekly Stock Watch, where we cover the most important stock market news that happened during the week. And announcements. So uh, not a lot of companies today, but companies that is widely followed. In South Africa, we'll be looking at Purple Group and Capitec. And in the US, we'll be looking at some of the AI companies and also Tesla's earnings. So I know Tesla is also a, a widely followed company. Uh, so let's jump into it. Before we do, let us know in the comments. There's a lot of talk about Purple Group. The results are expected to come out on Monday. We did a video on Purple Group in this week where we used Google Trends to predict the earnings and you can check that video, the link is in the description but let us know in the comments are you bearish or bullish on Purple Group in the short term? We'd like to know. So let's get into it. Capitec, first one. You know, it's Capitec is this, this bank that's just not a bank really. It's, it's so innovative. It's such a good company. They've done an incredible job over the past few years. Incredible management. Um, but they are trading at such a high PE compared to the other banks. The PE ratio is in the 20s, if I'm not mistaken, the last time I looked. And the other banks, like Standard Bank, is around 8 to 9 PE. Uh, so it's definitely priced for growth, and the growth is not what it used to be. So, you know, we might see a re-rating. But let's look at the results. So the operating profit before tax increased by 12% to 12.2 billion rand. Earnings per share increased by 14%. Net asset value increased by 9%. And the final dividend uh, is 28 Rand per share. Uh, and that will be paid on 15 May 2023. So, you know, there is some dividend. But if you look at the overall results, you know, earnings per share, that is a big one. Uh, earnings per share increased by 14%. But, you know, if you just look at the growth versus what it's priced at, it is a bit disappointing. I mean, it's still incredible results. You know, for a company this size to continuously show proper growth is really impressive. But it's the value is just, you know, the price that you pay matters. And it's a quality company, but the price you pay matters. And they're all busy with, you know, various other products that might be, you know, explosive over the next few years. Uh, they're all busy with the telecommunications side. They're all busy with so many other things. It's it's really innovative company. But for me, I love the company, but I won't be investing in Capitec. Just the valuation doesn't make sense. It hasn't made sense for me in a while. Um, it's a, you know, if you bought a few years ago... You could probably retire by now, um, but, you know, interesting. Uh, Paul, any thoughts on Capitec? Uh, thank you. you go, um, yeah, for, for the listeners, you got a very interesting video on uh, a metric that you can use, uh, of course, not in isolation, with, together with all your other metrics this week and using Purple Group as an example. Um, so go check that out. Um, but anyway, so so the banks, once again, you go, we've covered quite a few banks Um lately and the banks have been doing well we're in an interesting place in the economy at the moment for the banks because they're benefiting from um, high interest rates and a weak economy people are borrowing more and they're also paying higher interest on on that debt so that's good but but the john doe the jan alaman like we said in afrikaans is struggling you know inflation is up um, we've got job cuts high interest rates so we're at a tipping point now where Companies are going to start, companies and individuals are going to start defaulting on their loans. It's already started. So, so when it comes to banks, I'm, I'm very, very cautious to invest in banks now because I don't think the next year they will do all that well just because of that default risk. Capitec specifically is, is very interesting to me. If you look at the, at, at the, at the results, so the, the profit is up by 12%. But remember, so what is profit? It's revenue minus expenses that gives you your, your profit. And 12% isn't bad. But if you look at the financial statements, I had a look, there's a big cut in salaries. So I investigated, basically, they cut salaries and especially bonuses because the management um, didn't reach the targets. So Capitec is already a very efficient bank. So they can't cut any of their expenses to a, to a big extent. And also cutting salaries is not sustainable. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen then. You're going to have riots. So, so actually for Capitec to make it to, to do really well, they have to increase the top line, which is the revenue. And I don't 
expect revenue to do all that well within the next year. Um, then Capitech as a company, they now have roughly 20 million users. Now, that's massive. So they're, they're, they're one of the big boys now. They used to be, you know, this new kid, kid on the block. They're now one of the big boys. And if you want to be one of the big boys, you need to trade at, you know, what the big boys are trading at. And like you rightly said, Capitech is very expensive. So, and that's fair if you can deliver on that, on that valuation. And for me, I cannot justify that. So in summary, I think bad debts are incoming. Revenues are not increasing, cost decrease, but it's not sustainable. Uh, we have a big company trading at a growth company valuation, like a, a mid to small cap valuation. So, yeah, I think what I did for South Africa is amazing, but as an investment case, I won't be surprised if Capitech, you know, if this stock falls to maybe 20, 30 percent over the next year or two. Not financial advice, of course. That's just my opinion. Yeah, that's a very interesting statement. Uh, the PE ratio is 20. You know, so you're paying a 20 price to earnings ratio compared to other banks that's also had incredible years. Standard Bank, FNB, Absa, all had incredible years. And they are trading at PEs of all below around 15, you know, 8, 9, 10, around there. So, you know, you're paying for growth and we didn't see that growth this year. The next company, Purple Group, Easy Equities announced the, that they partnered with Gcash, the largest mobile wallet in the Philippines, to offer managed portfolios of US shares to the Philippines. Gcash and Easy Equities have been meeting on a consecutive basis with the SEC in the Philippines to ensure compliance and approval for the real product launch. This partnership aims to make investing more accessible, friendly and affordable for everyone in the Philippines. That was the announcement that they put out. And the partnership will start with just a game, so no revenues, just an investing game, basically a stock big game as I understand correctly. And if they get final approval from the SEC and all the regulations are out of the way, then they'll launch the real product. This sounds very exciting on the base of it. I mean, 70 million users, that is how many users this Gcash is, that's 70 million. And that is a lot. But what we also saw with the Capitec partnership, you know, like you said, they have 20 million uh, users and about 7 million or so on, on their banking app. The conversions for Easy Equities hasn't really gone up massively. I mean, here and there, yes, they're getting new users, but I mean, it's, it's, it hasn't made a massive impact. And the thing is with partnership, partnerships, conversion rates is everything. You know, if, if you put a product in front of 100 million users, it's all about how many are actually going to convert. And then also in the Philippines, it is highly regulated. Uh, it's a different environment, different politics, different laws. So to put the exact same products there is going to be a challenging. But, you know, short term, as I mentioned on the video, link in the description once again, that I am quite bearish on Purple Group over the short term. I've been bearish uh, over the short term. I've posted several times on my Twitter. I love the company, I love the management, I love the platform, I use the platform. We have fin me up baskets on Easy Equities. Um, you know, it's I love all of that. But just for the, the price you pay, I mean, it's trading at a, a high PE ratio. The growth is slowing down. The local economy is not looking good. There's less disposable income, less available investments for people to make. So they really need something like this to pull off, to, to put them from where they are now to the next level. If you just take South Africa alone, Yes, over the few few years, I can, I'm very positive that it's going to be bigger than it is today. But short term, there's headwinds. Long term, if you want it, not just the, the little bit of increases that you can get from the local economy, you want to go global. And this is an untapped market. And the more difficult something is, the better the opportunity. Because if you do it at the end of the day, the chance of new entrants and the threat of competition is lower just because it was so difficult. So it is a big opportunity, but it's too early to make a conclusion. Uh, you know, first they need to run the tests with the game and then they need to do the actual product implementation and then they need to convert. So it's going to be interesting to watch if they do this right, like if they manage what to do there, what they did in South Africa, this company will explode. If they don't, we're just going to see the, the same things we are seeing in the local economy. I, I know in Australia, we haven't really seen a massive traction, uh, you know, obviously equities there. But the Australian market is a beast and many companies have realized that over the past few years. But anyway, uh, you know, let us know what you think of this partnership. Do you think they'll be able to convert or not? Uh, Paul, any thoughts? 
Yeah, Igor, I think you make a few very good points. Uh, maybe I'll just echo what you said. So 70 million users is that's that's a lot of people. Uh, so obviously the the you know the potential is huge. But once again, we, we've already seen this. We've seen it with uh, the integration with Capitec and also Discovery, as if I remember correctly. And I don't think the we've seen the results that we expected. You know, you, you would think a app like Capitec, 20 million users, Easy Equities only has, I think, 1.5 million users, integrate with Capitec, it's going to explode. And that's not what we saw. So I am I'm cautious here. 70,000 is amazing, but out of the 70, not 70, 70 million people, how many people will actually open an account? How many people will fund that account? And once it's funded, how many people will actually buy and sell? Because remember, Easy Equities makes money by people trading. Uh, trading frequently, like buying and selling, they make commission on that. So overall, I remain skeptical um, uh, on Purple Group as an investment case. Yes, the platform is amazing. Um, I think it's easy to use. The fractional shares that they introduce is, is amazing, especially for people that doesn't have a lot of money that wants to buy big, um, big company shares. So I love the platform. I also love sushi, but I'm not going to pay 500 rand for you know, a portion of Seven Roses. So... Let's see. I think we'll trade. We'll probably continue trading flat for the next three to five years, in my opinion. That's an interesting comment. Uh, you know, Purple Group, this is a blue sky scenario. It is it is still in the early days. I mean, they have 1.5 million users, but it's still in the early days. So if you invest in this one, it is a view on the long term. Um, you know, short term, I'm also skeptical. But long term... They could pull something off, but I mean, that we'll have to view as, as time goes on. So we'll continue commenting on that. But once again, you know, love the platform. Uh, it's, it's really a good business and what they've achieved is incredible. So, you know, as of to the management and they've shown that they can do it. So let's see if they can do it again. Looking at the US, uh, Tesla, as those who've been following myself and Finn me up for, for quite a while, You'll know that since 2019, I was very, very bullish on Tesla. There was a stage where I only had two companies in my stock portfolio. In the US, I only had Tesla, and in, in, on the JC, I only had Purple Group. And that was during the 2020 days, and you know that performed quite well. But then the narrative changed, as we also spoke about a few things with narrative. But now people are looking for you know cash flow, profits. It's not about the growth alone anymore. And Tesla managed to do incredible things over the past few years. So, you know, what's happening now with Tesla is they are ramping up the production. In their uh, earnings call, Elon Musk highlighted that their demand is still greater than their production. So they still have a demand problem, but they did continuously or a few times now decrease the prices of Tesla vehicles. When companies decrease prices, it's always not good to see because that means either, you know, they the, there's not enough demand, you know, for the higher prices um, or they are expecting lower demand or it could be just to increase market share. Uh, you know, it could be one of those two reasons, but we did see that their profit margins are below what they used to be. So there was an effect on profit margins. So earnings per share was 85 US cents. Missing expectations by one cent. Revenue of $23.3 billion. Missing expectations also slightly. Tesla ended Q1 with cash and cash equivalents uh, of $22.4 billion. That's up 24%. So that is, they are sitting on some proper amounts of cash. Elon Musk has confirmed Tesla is making significant investments in NVIDIA's GPU. So there's something bullish on NVIDIA. That's just something crazy. How NVIDIA has ran over the past six months, it's up like 133%. And it's running on a PE ratio of like 150 or something. Crazy what, what this hype in AI can do, and we'll touch on AI now. But Elon Musk also said that Tesla achieved a 25% reduction in cost of goods sold. So, you know, seeing some, some better inflation levels in the US. I mean, in locally, we've, we haven't seen that lower inflation levels yet, but, you know, that's good for Tesla because that means their operating expenses are lower, uh, the production costs are lower, etc., etc. So, overall, Tesla, I still love the company long term. Short term, I don't, you know, I've sold mine a while ago, as I also mentioned on Twitter. Um, and, you know, long term, I love the company. You know, if they execute rolling out more cars, they've got a, the, the goal of 20 million cars uh, in the next few years. They've also got the robots coming, they've got self-driving vehicles, they've got the energy. So it is also 
early days in the bigger picture of Elon Musk's huge vision. But short term, you know, where we are, I'm not rushing in to buy Tesla shares. Do I think it's going to be more valuable in five years' time? Yes. I do see. That, uh, that's my opinion. I, I do think it's going to be more valuable. But over the next two to three years, or maybe even just one to two years, I don't think we're going to see anything that, uh, that shoots the lights out from, from Tesla. Any thoughts from your side, Paul? I am. I jumped on the Elon Musk bandwagon quite a quite a while ago. You go. I, I love this guy. This guy is amazing in my opinion. Yes, he's controversial, but I I, I believe in, in in most of the things that he that he says and his vision. And Tesla as a company is obviously an amazing company. Would I invest in it? I would never invest in it individually, or I would have in the, in the past, not now. But I would, would never short it either. It's it's just it's a game changer, but. Talking about valuation, we've talked about, you know, the valuation of Purple Group and Capitec today, which we feel is a little bit too high. Just to give you an idea, okay, just off the bat, I just want to say that Tesla, of course, isn't just an automobile electric vehicle company. There's other, other things going on as well. But looking at market cap, the size of the company, this company is bigger than the 10 next biggest companies in the world, automobile companies in the world, bigger than Toyota, Ford, you know, all of these companies combined. Now, that's crazy. That is, that's ridiculous. So is it justified? Now, yeah, we can go on for hours and hours and hours. So personally, I feel very comfortable investing in Tesla as one of, as part of an index. So S&P 500 and NASDAQ. So because Tesla is the eighth biggest company on the S&P 500. So when you invest in the S&P 500, for instance, you are investing a significant portion in Tesla. And I'm very comfortable leaving it there and say, yes, I'm indirectly a shareholder, but, but not directly. I'm too scared. It's, too, it's massive. It's, it's the valuation is crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, that conversation could be in, in two hours of conversation. The, the market cap that Tesla is bigger than all the others combined. But then you also have to look at a few things. If you look at the debt levels of some of those other car companies, if you look at the margins, uh, if you look at the room for growth, if you look at the current growth, Tesla, you know, beats all the other companies in all those metrics. So, you know, once again, great company, but you pay for growth. So they need to show growth. I do think that they will show growth. I mean, everywhere you go, you, you know, in, on honeymoon, we were in a different country. We were in Maldives. And even there, there was a Tesla. And everybody just took photos of the Tesla. Everybody's walking around the Tesla. Just, oh, it's a Tesla. And if you see a Tesla in South Africa, if you see a Tesla anywhere, people are like, oh, it's a Tesla. Now, that brand that carries a lot of value, especially if they lower the prices and make it aff more affordable for many. So yes, I, I do think that they, they are going to show the growth that the market expects. Um, but just on the short term thesis or, or where the market is at, at the narrative, I'm not rushing in, but it is on my radar. Um, you know, it, it has done well for me over the past few years, um, you know, but it, it's going to be interesting to watch. But part of their AI, self-driving cars, but more on AI. So Microsoft has ChatGPT. Alibaba is also launching its own version of ChatGPT. Amazon is launching its own version. Google is launching its own version. And Facebook is launching its own version. And Elon Musk is planning on Truth GPT. Everybody is launching ChatGPTs. And we knew this was coming as soon as Microsoft you know, or ChatGPT came out. It's a race, it's a race to the moon. And it's going to be interesting to watch my chips. Well, currently everyone's chips is on Microsoft to win at this. But my chips is don't underestimate Google. Like, don't underestimate them. If you look at the valuation differences, people are discounting Google quite a lot. Um, you know, and I do think, yes, Microsoft is ahead and they'll probably still be ahead in a, in a few years' time. But just watch watch Google. That's That's my take on that. But it's very interesting to watch um this whole movement in uh, let us know if you want us to do just a video on ai in the comments um which companies we, we find interesting there is actually a fin me up basket on easy equities uh in the us side it's called the ai data Cybersecurity and new technology uh basket so it's our favorite companies in those areas combined uh, so check that out uh, it's on easy equities but yeah, what what are your thoughts on on all of this this AI as a as a final comment for for today's video? Yeah, so yeah, so so remember when we fought, first chatted about you know when we when it was introduced you know ChatGPT and and we said that you know it's very likely that, that within the next six months all the big tech companies will create and develop their own version 
and integrate it with their products. I mean, I mean it was inevitable. I, have, I watched this one YouTube channel where the guy always goes, when he, when he predicts something and it just short, sort of happens, just sort of, then he goes like, exactly as predicted, exactly as predicted. So maybe I would say this time you go, exactly to the T as predicted, this is what will happen. So on that note, maybe, um, you know, for the, for the viewers, I just launched, um, well, as part of the Finna podcast, where um, a, a series called Stock Savvy, where we actually investigate individual stocks and we make a prediction. You know, I'm joined by an expert. I've, I've been joined by Sol Financial, Josh Yun, Charles Boerta, and, and quite a few more is actually coming. And of course, stock picking is a prediction. What will happen in the next year or two? Are we going to make some money? So maybe if you want to get some of that action and, and maybe get into exactly as predicted, um, you will feel free, free to watch it. And please comment. We want to improve. We want to grow the channel. Awesome. Uh, by the way, if you want to book a call with Paul, uh, he is my personal financial advisor as well. Uh, the link is in the description. It's free. You know, Chat to him. Ask him your questions. Get to know him. Um, he's, he's a really clever guy. Um, but anyway, so I hope you have a, a great weekend. Let us know in the comments what you think of Purple Group. You know, are you expecting good or bad results? Maybe there was a, there is a few rumors that they announced their uh, partnership with Gcash just before the results to soften the blow of the results. So we'll have to see. Uh, and check the video we did on the Google Trends predicting Purple Group's results. Um, that's going to be interesting to watch. We'll also do a commentary video on Purple Group once the results are out. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. You know, thanks for being part of the community. Cheers.